That is a hit at a mile. In today's video, I want to talk about the PEX 2A America Cold Weather Carry Gun Challenge. This is a video that's been going around discussing the differences in summer carry and winter carry. Uh, he tagged Kentucky Patriot, which I seen Kentucky Patriot's video. Kentucky Patriot tagged Loads of Bacon, and Loads of Bacon has tagged me. I had not originally seen the original video from PEX 2A America, and I just recently watched it a few minutes ago. I had watched Kentucky Patriots as it came out, and I just watched loads of bacon. So on the table in front of me, I have basically my two carry guns that I use and an assortment of holsters. Uh, I've been concealed carrying now for five years. I've used many holsters, and I've actually used several different guns, and these are the two that I've pretty much settled on uh, learning as I go. I have inside the waistband options and I also have outside the waistband options and we'll go through each. So to get a little bit of history about me and concealed carry, I live in the state of Illinois which this February will be the five year anniversary of us getting concealed carry. I had my permit issued on the first day so mine's up for renewal here. The first firearm uh, pistol that I pretty much purchased on my own was a few about a year or so before the concealed carry started. They had the you know was talking about it, getting it passed. The uh, federal uh, court ruled that they had to issue one, and the first one I purchased was a Glock 19. As you can see, it is clear. The Glock 19 is an excellent pistol in my opinion. However, it is just a little on the large size to carry every day. Um, I've been through a few other pistols. I started with a Ruger LC9, carried that for about a year or so. When the LC9S came out, I carried that for about a year or so. Was not entirely happy with the LC9 or the S, and then I went to the Glock 43. As you can see, it is clear. The Glock 43, in my opinion, is the perfect size carry handgun for me. It may not be for you. Uh, it is still very shootable, yet concealable, and very reliable being the Glock platform. I am a left-handed shooter, and I've never had any issues running Glocks left-handed. Run the slide release with that finger, trigger same finger. That's all you got to worry about. And I also mag release with that finger. I kind of change my grip, drop it, and I'm back on. In front of me here, I have several holsters that I used. I've had many more holsters through the years, always adapting and trying to figure out the best one for my needs. Uh, I typically have a dedicated inside the waistband holster as well as a outside the waistband holster. Uh, to start out on my everyday carry, the Glock 43, I use a CYA supply company. This is a Kydex inside the waistband holster. This is a very high quality holster. Whenever I pick up a holster like this, I disassemble it and I lock tight all the fasteners because over time they will loosen up. These have been lock tighted. I've never had any issues. I've got my tension set to where I want it. Snaps into place. It is very secure. It is not going to fall out. This is a very slim holster. It, uh, it comes on and off very easy. My uh, job I'm not allowed to carry so I have, the, I have to be able to remove this very easy when I get in the parking lot and I can just pop this whole thing off holster and all, throw it in my console and I'm done. Sometimes I feel that I want to carry outside the waistband and I use this Phobos outside the waistband paddle holster. This is a left-handed model. Um, the Phobos kind of has a bad reputation of not fitting guns well, and as far as the fit is fine, it's removing the gun from the holster. I've had many Phobos holsters, and you snap the gun in, and you cannot get them out. And one little fix for that is to add a washer right here. I think it's actually a lock washer, and that spaces it out enough, and then you have a good, a good retention, but yet you can still pull it out. And typically, I just use my thumb when I, I rip the pistol, and I just push right there and that works very well. So those are the two holsters that I use for the Glock 43. Now on occasion in winter time I do carry the Glock 19. I haven't yet this year but we also haven't had much cold weather. 
once I'm wearing like a Carhartt coat or something like that primarily all the time, I will switch to the Glock 43. This is a Alien Gear holster, and originally I carried this with my LC9. Uh, I have a Glock shell on this because I no longer have the LC9. I have carried this a few times, but this one really doesn't get carried anymore. The other inside the waistband holster is the Stealth Gear USA. This is a very high quality holster, and this is a very breathable holster. This is kind of like a jersey slash tennis shoe type material. Uh, it's a little bit thicker than the Alien Gear, but it, it, it's basically padded. It has a very good retention, a very nice fit. This holster is a little pricey. It runs around $100, and this is one of the first inside the waistband holsters I've purchased. I figured, why not? I might as well buy a, a good one. Buy once, cry once. Now, my outside the waistband carry for that is kind of a, a hybrid. This is the Blackhawk Serpa with the retention mounted to a Phobos paddle. I'm not a fan of the Blackhawk paddles. I'm a, I'm a smaller guy as far as kind of like skinny and that wide uh, Blackhawk paddle does not work with me well. I do like these Phobos holsters. They have the retention that will grip a belt or whatever here. And uh, all I done was basically just drilled a couple holes. I washered it to shim it just a little bit, Loctited it down and this has been an excellent outside the waistband carry. Um, I like this retention. I ride a lot of four-wheelers and stuff, and I want this pistol snapped in. I don't want this thing to bounce out. Uh, as far as removing it from the holster, it is just a natural feel. When you go for the gun, your finger is generally naturally straight on it, and that releases it. So don't even have to think about it. It comes right out, but yet is not going to fall out. That has been a very good holster for me. I've had this pretty much since I got the uh, gun, and uh, I carry that quite a bit. Now one thing about carrying outside the waistband I've run into is you are naturally a little bit wider. I catch myself snagging the gun on uh, door frames and walking through rooms. Um, it's something you got to get used to. I typically carry that right on my side uh, about 4 o'clock. Being a uh, kind of a, a skinnier type person, I don't have a 3 o'clock. I basically go front to back. It's like two o'clock, four o'clock. I can't carry exactly on the side. Uh, the Glock 43, this holster, basically I carry it right above my wallet on my left side. Uh, it, it fits very well, natural contour to my body. Don't even hardly know it. I'm, know it's there. And I do the same as well with the inside the waistband. So I'm, I'm basically four, 4.30 is where I carry everything. Um, carrying this Glock, uh, at about four o'clock still enables me to get in my front pockets and uh, say I'm in a store I can actually you know reach my pocket and and not show the gun. It works out pretty well Another thing I'll add is about carry ammo I carry the gold dot and there are two options as far as buying this ammo You have your little boxes of personal defense and then you have your duty ammunition these are almost the exact same price. This has 20 rounds and this has 50 rounds. So these were oriented towards, you know, personal defense and people think, oh, we got to pay big money to get this. This is the exact same ammo. Another uh, reason, the other day I was at a gun shop and I had the guy explain to me that the uh, personal defense and all basically bought in ammo has an excise tax on it and you are paying for that. Duty ammunition is oriented towards law enforcement and does not include that excise tax. Um, I have no other uh, info about that other than what he said, but that also makes sense. So generally this, it don't have a price tag. This runs 22 to $29, depending where you buy it. It's quite a bit. And I think you can usually pick these up for about $22 per 50 rounds. So, I mean, you're looking at 50 cents a round to a dollar to a dollar and a quarter round for the same ammo. The next thing I want to talk about is clothing selection. You always dress yourself around the gun. You don't, that, that's the best way to do it. So you'll see in a lot of my videos, I'm wearing these midway shirts. Uh, I think I have six long sleeve midway shirts in three different colors, and then I have a few of these short sleeve. These midway shirts are very long. They say they're kind of oriented towards the concealed carry person, and I really like them. And you can pick these up generally for seven to eight bucks a, sh a piece. And this is the uh, you know the tri blend ultra soft cotton. I love these shirts, and that's why I have six of them. Uh, this is the long sleeve version of it. I typically wear these a lot in the winter. This offers excellent coverage. 
For a summer shirt, these are excellent as well. It's the same shirt, just in short sleeve. These shirts are typically probably three to four inches longer than any other uh, regular t-shirt in that size. They fit very well. Another option for summer is Carhartt shirts. Carhartt shirts are also naturally a little bit long. Um, typically, I wear an extra large in most shirts, and uh, this one is a large, and it fits very well. Some of these shirts are also available in a large tall, and that also fits very well. The large tall is actually a little bit longer than the extra large, but it's also a little slimmer. So this is my typical everyday carry. I wear the gun exactly right there. My wallet is right there being left-handed. Um, these uh, snap button shirts, I never tuck my shirt in, or very rarely. I bet there's not one, maybe one occasion a year, if that, that I have a tucked in shirt. So that's my normal carry. Um, we can move around, bend over. It does print this way. This is how I typically dress every day in the winter. So uh, it's easy to remove, and it's also re easy to put back on, like in a vehicle. So that's why I really like that holster. So going outside the waistband with the 43, typically you have this seam on your jeans and that is where I want the pistol lined up. That way I can still get in my pocket just fine. I can still get my wallet out just fine and it is right there, still easy to get a hold of. These uh, pants have a belt loop where I don't really want it. I typically used to wear a lot of Dickies jeans and Dickies have a belt loop exactly right there and you can actually just line that up and you know where it is. This kind of straddles one, but I don't carry this way very often. But uh, that is how I carry outside the waistband with the 43. So I got the 19 on outside waistband, same story. Follow that seam up, still get your pockets. It's a little bit larger and I like the height. It's a little bit higher up, it's out of the way. Um, this you know you have something on it's a little bit larger you're a little bit wider with it but if i'm doing a lot of foiler riding out and about this is what i'll have on uh, I, I carry the 19 outside the waistband even in the summer uh it, it, it's one of those if you're going to be in public's one thing if you're, if you're i live in an extremely rural area so i really don't care i don't even care if i really open carry out out and about when i'm out on the four wheeler or whatever uh still good access to my wallet and everything and it's still pretty easy to remove with this Paddle. So the last one we'll talk about is inside the waistband with the Glock 19 with the Stealth Gear holster. This is probably one of the most comfortable ways to carry this pistol. I, uh, I carried it this way for quite a while. I've been actually in a lot of large cities and carried this way. Uh, it's very discreet. Uh, the only issue with this kind of holster is the uh, taking it on and off, say in a vehicle, it is very difficult. Uh, a lot of people coined the term uh, Super Tuck Dance because Super Tuck, Super Tuck was one of the first hybrid holsters and you know you got to jiggle and shake and, and get it. But uh, if, if I'm not going to be removing this and I want to conceal, I carry this way a lot in the winter. I haven't yet this winter because it still hasn't got that cold yet, but uh, you know when it's below 32 all the time, I generally probably am carrying this way. Uh, you have a lot more options with this sort of holster as far as adjustability, as far as your cant, your tilt, and uh, where you want it. Uh, the way my body is, this handle folds very nicely into my back, and uh, it, it just it's just like there's a, a void there just for that pistol. Uh, sitting, driving, very comfortable, and I, I highly recommend one of these stealth gears. If it's something that uh, you're going to carry a lot and you don't have to remove it, that is really something you should look into. Uh, it's very quick to remove and very easy to reholster. One other thing we'll discuss is a spare mag. This is kind of awkward because I'm holding the camera. But in this watch pocket on my right side, I typically keep my spare mag for my Glock 43. Uh, it's a little easier to get out with my other hand, but it is there. Also with these cargo pants, sometimes I do carry one down here. If I'm gonna be standing up and walking a lot, if I'm gonna be sitting, you have the chance of that falling out. But uh, it's very secure in these watch pockets. Uh, it may not be the most convenient for getting it out, but at least you have it with you. And uh, it works out pretty well. It's a short magazine. So that pretty much concludes this video. Uh, basically it boils down to temperature and the amount of clothing that I'm wearing. 75 to you know 85% of the time I'm gonna have that Glock 43 on me, but on occasion, even in the summer, I'll have that 19. It just depends on what I'm doing, where I'm going, if I'm gonna be around a large, large amounts of people, uh, if I'm going out of state or something, I'll also take that into consideration. Winter, snow out, wearing Carhartt bibs. A lot of times Carhartt bibs, I'll wear it on my side with the bibs split around it where I can access it. So at this time, I need to tag two people to do a response video. This is voluntary, you don't have to. 
uh, you know, if you don't want to. But the first person I want to tag is Mr. Kyle Lusk. I know Kyle pocket carries, so I would be very interested into his insight on pocket carry. And then I don't know if this person has a carry permit or not, but I'm going to tag Tin Man. I really enjoyed Tin Man's videos recently, so uh, I'm going to send all you guys over to his channel to check it out. So Tin Man, I'd like to see what your thoughts are on summer carry and winter carry and carry in general. So that's going to wrap up today's video. I want to thank everybody for watching. Make sure you go back and check out the PEX 2A America original video. Uh, you can check out Kentucky Patriots video, Loads of Bacon's video, and you're watching this video. and kind of get you uh, how this whole thing got started. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you later.